So, good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is well. Um, I just want to make a video for uh, what we covered last week, um, Chapter 9, uh, for you people who uh, weren't here. So, going forward, we're, next week, uh, next Tuesday, we'll do Chapter 10, and then I think I'll combine Chapters 11 and 12, uh, pick out the important slides, and then after that, we'll do the presentations. I believe you received an email from the TA with the dates for the presentations. So, please be ready for the first week it's not fair for people i pick who are not uh you know if, if you're not ready uh for the first week and uh, uh that means that gives some people an extra week so you've got to be ready you've got to hand have a hard copy of your powerpoint slides and your business plan ready to give me okay so uh, make sure you make hard copies before you go up you hand me each copy okay anyway so let's move on with uh with chapter nine here and chapter nine, as you see, we're going to cover um, uh, projecting financial statements. The important word here, of course, is projecting, right? We're going to look forward and kind of assume what we may have in the in the um, future. So, um, we're, so we're going to do that. And let's move on. All right, so if you look at this slide here, let me actually see if I can make this a little bigger. Uh, we're going to cover like rapid growth stage in, in, in this. Each chapter highlights the section we're doing. So we're going to look at, uh, you know, of the seven, rapid growth stage, right? So we'll look at that uh, with regards to projecting financial statements. <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to look at the differences, right, in forecasting sales. And, you know, seasoned firms means they've been around for a while, right, and versus early stage. And the big topic today, and I'm going to highlight this in red, will be the equations and the theory about sustainable growth rate. And um, so we're going to talk a lot about that, and there'll be different equations for that. So we'll do that. And um, we're going to look at um, how you get uh, the uh, additional funds you may need to support your uh, sales forecast, right? If you're going to have a sales forecast, you, you're going to probably obviously say, I need additional money for that, right? That that becomes important. All right. So, uh, and then we'll look at how you time them. And uh, and then we'll, at the end, we'll look at the percent of sales method for uh financial plans for the income statement the balance sheet and and so on all right the math is there's a little math here but it's not really uh it's not really that difficult so we'll go through it and there's a couple terms you, you have to know all right so so let me uh just uh fix this a little bit so uh all right so for um for a seasoned firm Right, we talked about that a minute ago. Right, it's been around for a while. They know now. This is the, this is the years that already have passed. Right. Notice there's no word here that says forecasting. Okay, it basically says. It basically says um, season firms, and it's the actual numbers over time. All right. So, um, so we have that. And, you know, it covers years 2012 through 2016. And you can see here's the sales, right? Here are the sales. And the percent change of sales growth rate would simply be the holding period return, right? If I take these two numbers here, subtract them from each other, and then divide by the beginning value, right? This is the final value. This is the beginning value. I subtract those and divide by the beginning value. I'll get a 10% growth rate. And I could do that for each year, right? I do that for each year, and then I would get 8%, and then I would get 10 and 12. And if I add them up and divide by four years, I have a 10% growth rate for over four years. Again, this is actual, okay? This is actual growth rate. All right, so um, the other thing is, if you remember from Business 330 holding period return, um, you look at, the probability of occurrence, there's an equation called expected return, 
and you look at the probability of occurrence of different scenarios here, right? Rapid growth or average growth. And then, you know, of course, the big job is, determin is, is determining this, these probabilities, right? And, um, and then again, you got to determine what sales growth rate you expect. So the math is trivial compared to getting the, the obvious uh, values you may need. Okay, so um, you multiply the probability times the sales growth rate, and you have, um, and then you add up all three numbers. If you see this, one multiplication, two multiplications, three multiplications, and you get these three numbers, and you add them up, and there's no division. You just add them up. Okay, so this is called expected return, right? So um, this is being introduced for the forecasted numbers, right? Now. For the seasoned firm, we know these numbers I said already. This is in the past. Now, here's the future. Notice the magic word there, forecast. So we pick up where we left off, 2016. Here's 2017 through 2021. And we forecast uh, these sales, right? Again, these are forecasted. And the percent change, again, is the difference here divided by the beginning value. And that should give you 12%. So subtract these two numbers, and um, you will get, uh, you know, 12%. And then if you subtract these two, divided by 35.40, and you'll get 10. Uh, subtract these two, divided by uh, 38.95, and you'll get 10. So if you, all right, so again, um, if you uh, use holding period return and then add up um, these years, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 12, 10, 10, 10, and divide by 5, you'll get a 10%. You'll get 10%. Okay? I hope that's clear to everybody. All right. So, um, let's move on to the next slide here. All right. So, early stage forecasting. Uh, again, here's the same equations, right? The equations don't change, right? You have optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic probabilities. Remember, the probabilities always add up to 1, right? So the probabilities have to add up to 1. And the uh, here's the ex forecasted sales growth rate. And here's the components you sum. And when you sum them up, and uh, you'll end up with 50%. Again, this is expected return from um, 330, the sum of the probabilities times the expected return, and then you add them, right? Now... Here is the projected forecasted year for the early stage forecasting for the sales. And it's the same thing. You take the difference here for the percentage change and you divide by 5. So 2.5 divided by 5 should give you 50%. Okay? So the math really stays the same. All right. And they go through another one if they knock back the growth rates. Nothing changes here. They just change the growth rates and lower them, I believe, using the word knockback. And, um, you know, you get these, and you'll end up with uh, 36% um, for each year. And you can take the average, right? You divide by four, right? And uh, you'll get uh, 36%, obviously. So the math doesn't change in, in any way, shape, or form here. All right, now this is the important thing. This is called uh, sustainable growth rates. And uh, basically, um, this is a very important, these are very important definitions. So, um, you know, you should, you should kind of know these. Um, so there's internally generated funds. And this is the what you generate, right, as the bottom line on the income statement. This is net income or profits after taxes, right? And then there's the term sustainable growth rates, right? And this is the rate. This is the rate of funds you need to maintain your predicted. Let me highlight that. To maintain your predicted growth rate, right? So this is the rate of sales you're going to need um, um, based on the your retention of profits in the business. So if you see what you're retaining here, right, you're retaining this, 
is that enough to basically use so you can grow the sales with, that you predicted so if i only if i'm only um generating a million dollars in funds but yet i expect i'm going to have growth rate of sales of 10 million and i need 3 million dollars to support that um, I have a problem, right? I have to get the money from somewhere else. So I don't have enough being generated internally. Um, all right, so let's get to the equation for sustainable growth rate. And I just want to emphasize, this is one equation written many, many ways, okay? So if we look at this here, the growth rate is, again, we looked at this ending minus beginning equity over the beginning equity. And of course, and when you subtract, that's a change in equity. All right, everyone should see that divided by the beginning equity. And they write the change in equity as delta E. I mean, everyone should see that over E beginning. All right, now another way to write this is the change in equity is net income times the retention rate. Now, the retention rate is how much money you're keeping, right, in the company, right? So the best scenario would be a retention rate of what? One. That means you're retaining what? All the money. Is everybody clear about that? And you're not giving out dividends or anything else. So you write this as NI times RR, short for retention rate. Okay, so delta E over E beginning is equal to NI, right, over E beginning, which is delta, whoops, sorry about that. Hold on, I, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back. All right, so so um, delta E over E beginning, which is here, is equal to NI over E beginning, right, um, times the retention rate, right? So you can kind of see that, and they're re basically rewriting this equation, right? So G had then becomes NI over E beginning times RR. They just define this as the growth rate. Okay. All right. So the the so this is the same one equation written many ways. One, you know, two, three, four, right? So this is an, a very important slide to know, as you can imagine. All right. So the return on equity. Now this is the return on equity is defined as the net profit margin. These are three ratios that you've had in 330. If you review, times asset turnover times the equity multiplier. Okay? And basically, again, the return on equity is defined this way, net income over common equity. If you, you know, review the um, uh, ratios. And how do I get that? If I take these three ratios, one, two, three, which are written as ratios here, Net income over net sales, net sales over total assets, and total assets over common equity. I knock out uh, net sales and net sales and total assets and total assets because they, they're in the numerator and the denominator. And I'm left with this, right? So basically, I can rewrite, either leave this the way it is, right? And basically, just change this to common equity in the beginning. And that'll give me my growth rate, right? All I do is take that, copy it down, this, copy it down, and that, copy it down. But I just look at my beginning, beginning common equity, and I multiply that by my retention ratio, which gives me my co current common equity, right? So this is, again, another way of writing that equation. And this is the this and this are the most common. But again, these are both the same, okay? So I have, you have to be given all these numbers. And uh, the operating performance times the financial policy. You don't have to know too much about this equation. All it is is two numbers. If I gave you two numbers, you would just multiply them. So that's not uh, uh, too complicated. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'll stop at this slide and make another video. I'm up to about 15 minutes, and the file, get, the video file gets really huge. So um, I'll, I'll make another one, and I'll pick up from here. All righty. Take care.